Hi everyone, it's Jill Steele from High Water Tackle and I'm here to talk to you today about one of my favorite fisheries. It's an odd year, so that means it's a pink salmon run, which we get on the southern part of the coast. And in the North Shore and through the Sea to Sky Corridor, we are currently in the peak of this season. So it's mid-August and we're seeing a lot of fish kind of readily available in both the fresh and salt water. In the Fraser Valley, the Chilliwack, the Harrison, and some of the other systems, we'll see those a little bit later, more into September, and that will be another opportunity that'll come a bit later. Pink salmon create a great opportunity for all anglers, but especially for new anglers. And if you're a gear angler or a fly angler, this is a really, really great opportunity to take advantage of. Today, we're gonna to talk about fly fishing for pinks because that is something that is a ton of fun, something I personally enjoy doing, and also a question we get very frequently from new fly anglers getting into the game. This is a great option and a great resource for new fly anglers to get out there and actually have some success. So the most common question we get is what fly rod do I need for pink salmon? And that can kind of go a couple different ways. Pink salmon range in size from as small as two to three pounds and upwards of 10 pounds if you're super, super lucky. Most I would say are gonna range between about four and six pounds. And even though they're not super big in their weight or their physical size, they do put up quite a battle. So a big question we get asked is what fly rod should I use? And the honest answer is, is there's a couple different options, but I'm gonna kind of make a recommendation based on what's gonna be the most appropriate for the flies that you're casting, where you're targeting them, and what you kind of really need as a backbone. So what I would definitely recommend if you're chasing pink salmon locally is an eight weight. Now you could go down to a six weight or even a seven weight, which is really kind of the ideal rod, but an eight weight not only gives you the backbone and the ability to land those fish in a uh, ethical and fast manner and get them in and either get them released or if you're gonna take one home and you have that opportunity to get them in quickly, uh, but it also kind of gives you the chance to be able to turn over lines, get out distance, use some weighted flies as well. If you do go down to a six weight, I would just run on an air of caution. Even though these salmon are not very big necessarily, they do put up quite a big fight and that can in turn cause a lot of problems. We generally see probably the most amount of fly rods broken on pink salmon, believe it or not, mostly because people underestimate their power. Another consideration to make is when you're fighting pinks, especially in a river, they fight really hard and with their uh, affectionately named uh, nickname humpies, they get that big arch on their back. And when you're fighting a fish in current with that big arch, they're not just a two pound fish anymore. They put up a big fight. And so what we wanna be able to do is just bring those in. So what I have here in my hand is just a classic eight, eight weight, nine foot fly rod. It's a medium action and that's gonna cover pretty much all your bases, not just for pinks, but later on if you're gonna go for coho or steelhead as well. This is kind of your quintessential salmon rod and will cover you for a lot of opportunities in British Columbia when it comes to salmon. So when it comes to a reel, we want something that's gonna be appropriately sized and matched to the rod. So most reels are gonna come in a seven or an eight or an eight or a nine size. You wanna make sure that that reel matches with the line weight of the rod that you're purchasing. So this here, we have an Islander LX 3.8 and that's the perfect size match for this eight weight rod. Now, a couple considerations to make when you're buying a reel for salmon or you're considering your first fly reel for a salmon purchase is you want something that's gonna have a good drag. That's a very, very important component. When we get into trout fishing, you can kind of forgo the drag a little bit. You can get into click pull and such, but something with a good solid either disc drag or a, in this case, cork drag, you're going to want something that you can really rely on and that you really have a lot of stopping power. So one thing we want to consider is if we are going to use this reel off the beach in the salt water, we want to get a reel that's compatible to that and something that is going to be able to handle that salinity from our oceans. So you want to look at something that's going to be either uh, anodized aluminum, you can use cast as well, but more importantly has either a sealed drag or a drag that you can get into and actually clean. This Islander I can actually completely take apart, clean it, adjust the cork, lubricate it, and put it back together. But really something that has a complete sealed drag, if it is carbon fiber, or if it has a roller bearing in it, that's something you wanna consider when you're looking for it. You also want something that's got a nice arbor on it, you're gonna have lots of pickup, and you can really get out there and be a quick retrieve when you're bringing it back in. So make sure that you have the right size, the right material, the right uh, sealed, uh, component if you are using it in the salt water and just make sure that it's going to balance very well with the rod that you're purchasing. 
So now that we've picked out our rod and our reel, let's talk about fly lines and what fly line we're gonna use under which application. So let's start with the beach. If you're gonna go down and target fish off any of our local beaches, especially here on the North Shore, we have quite a few opportunities. You're gonna to wanna to consider either a full floating line or a clear intermediate sinking line. And there's a couple reasons for this. A full floating line sits completely on the surface and is used in tandem typically with a nine foot tapered leader. This is gonna allow the fly to sink just below the surface and have you kind of in that perfect one to two foot uh, below the surface of the ocean and get that fly down and get it moving. Usually with a slow strip or kind of a medium, intermediate, quick, uh, small strip set there. The clear intermediate line sinks fully and completely, but at a very, very slow rate. It's also clear and tends to be a little bit more camouflaged than a topwater full floating line. Either of these two options would be perfect off the beach, paired with a nine foot tapered leader. So if you're fishing in the river, what we're gonna want is ideally a sinking tip line. And there's a couple different ways we can do that. And the reason we want a sinking tip is because now we are battling current. And so we wanna get that fly out there and we wanna get it sinking a little bit and to kind of match with the current and get it down and get it moving. Pinks are typically fished in the river on a downstream cast and a swung presentation. So swung right in tight to shore, they tend to travel up quite uh, tight along the shoreline as they're moving through. So a sinking tip, and the sinking tip can be arranged from type three right up to type six, depending on the river you're fishing and depending on how fast the current is. There's quite a few options in these on that sink rate. So just be sure to kind of pick depending on the fishery that you're utilizing. The other option that you can go to if you don't want to buy a designated or inline sink tip is to use a floating line and the poly leaders. And what these are is they're essentially little cheater tips that are designed to be used on the end of this full floating fly line. So what they are is they're a sinking material coated on top of monofilament that comes in a number of different lengths from five feet right up to 14 feet and they have different sinking rates. So you can use the poly leaders in tandem with the full floating lines and that will essentially create a sink tip. The nice thing about the poly leaders is that you can take this off and now you have your full floating line again. So it does give you a bit of versatility in that uh, kind of option there. It's nice, but it's not gonna cast as well as your designated sink tip. So just be aware that there might be a little bit of hinging, but it does kind of give you that freedom and those options to get out there. So either way in the river, you are looking for a sinking tip option just to get that fly down. The most important thing when you're using a sinking tip, whether it's with the poly leaders or with your designated sink tip, is you don't want your line to be too far, uh, sorry, your leader line to be too far away from the sink tip itself. So the leader section that you're gonna have off the end of your either floating line and poly leader or designated sink tip is only gonna be roughly four to maybe five feet in length. You wanna keep that short and you wanna keep it uh, low enough or short enough, sorry, so that you can make sure that that fly is following what your tip is doing. If it's too long, your fly is gonna be up floating around doing its own thing and your sink tip's gonna be way down on the bottom. So keep that line short, that leader line short, and make sure it's not too long when you're attaching it to your sinking tips. So when it comes to leader, there's a couple of different ways that we can go as well. Um, you can get tippet material and usually one X or uh, two X would be fine. So anywhere from about 10 pounds right up to about 13 pounds. You could use just straight maximum monofilament or your preferred choice of monofilament if you wanted to. And you could also use fluorocarbon too. Just be reminded when you are using fluorocarbon in the rivers in tandem with your sinking tip that fluorocarbon does have a tendency to sink. So what you're gonna see is you might get an increased sinking and you might be catching up more. If the conditions are low and clear though, that might be your best option. But generally your leader line for either your tapered leaders or for your uh, leader off the end of your sinking tip, you're gonna want anywhere from 10 to right up to 15 pounds depending on where you are. So just make your choice and just as long as it's good quality and in that range, you should be totally fine. 
So let's get to the fun part. Which flies do we use? And just like the fly line and the technique, we're gonna talk about different flies for different applications. So if you are off the beach and you are making a little bit more of a subtle presentation out in the water, you're gonna wanna look for some flies that are a little bit more on the sparser side. And if you're tying as well, think on the sparser side of things. So flies that are a little bit uh, finer in their presentation, a little bit smaller maybe overall, and not quite as uh, big or an aggressive kind of look to them. You want something that's gonna be a little bit more subtle, a little bit softer, a uh, little bit less flash maybe, and a little bit smaller. In terms of the bead and the actual hook size, it can range from anywhere from four down to size 10, but typically sixes and eights are the number one kind of fly. So patterns like the Beach Boy um, and the Handlebar are very, very common patterns used off the beach around here. Now, if you are gonna go in the river and you're gonna be in a system and in this time of year, systems are often very colored. We have some glacial melt coming in. You're gonna want something that's gonna be a little bit of a bigger and a more aggressive uh, look to it and potentially a little bit heavier as well. So you have comets, tie terrors, uh, the pink finks. These are all patterns that are gonna be a little bit bushier and gonna show up a little bit better in the river itself. So these also, you can see, have either uh, bead chain eyes or bead heads as well. Those are gonna help sink it down and help get that fly moving really, really well in the water. The classic pink for pink is still the number one trend as it comes to flies. And you can kind of see that reflected here in this box. Typically, pink patterns, pink colors are gonna be your number one, but don't be afraid to experiment and try colors such as chartreuse, which is a very, very common color as well for pinks, or even into the metallics, so chrome or copper as well. Uh, getting a box just like this, you'd be completely set for a weekend either on the beach or out on the water, but just keep it simple and make sure you have lots around because unfortunately, you hook up into a lot and they're pretty spunky and you don't wanna be without flies when you're out there on the water. So fly fishing for pinks is definitely one of my favorite fisheries and something I always look forward to on those odd years. So if you have any questions about what to use, what the setup should be, what line, if your existing setup works, and even what flies or what patterns you should do, feel free to drop by and talk to me anytime. I'm here and I'm happy to help and I'm usually available to spend some time kind of talking about not only my love for fishing for pinks, but hopefully get you invested as well. So come down, Say hi and don't be afraid to talk and let's talk fishing and let's see if we can't get you into some pinks this year.